Sounds from Hell is said to have been recorded from the world's deepest borehole, known as the Kola Borehole or the Kola Ultra Deep Borehole, a classified site with a scientific priority located on the Kola Peninsula. On May 24, 1970, in the northwestern part of the Kola Peninsula, Murmansk Region USSR, a special secret geological project began, which is said to have led to some of the most mysterious discoveries made in the deepest hole ever dug. Discoveries that completely change our knowledge of planet Earth up to this point. The revelations also raise a conspiratorial question that remains shrouded in mystery to this day. Have we opened the door to hell? We will find the answer in this video. The beginning of the project was given in 1962 by the Interdepartmental Scientific Council of the USSR for the study of the interior of the Earth and ultra-deep drilling. A special geological expedition was created for the selection of the site, the research of which ended in 1965 with the selection of the Murmansk region on the Kola Peninsula. The main tasks set before the team are to identify the characteristics of geological processes and phenomena, including mineralization, study of the boundaries between the layers of the Earth's crust and data on the composition and state of the material. The place was not chosen by chance. It is located on the Baltic Shield, where ancient volcanic rocks about three billion years old are available near the surface. The multi-kilometer section of the layers will be a visual history of the planet for the last three billion years. The Earth is said to be 4.5 billion years old. Based on seismological data, a section of the Earth's crust is created, which serves to prepare a forecast by scientists about the layers through which the drill is expected to pass. After five years of construction and site preparation, Real drilling operations began in 1970. It was more difficult to get you to work on the Kola Superdeep, as the residents of the village called the drilling well, than to get you in the cosmonaut squad. Out of a hundred applicants, they chose only one. Together with the job appointment order, the lucky ones received accommodation and a salary equal to that of the third to fourth Moscow professors. 16 research laboratories, each the size of a medium-sized factory, were simultaneously working on the well. Only the Germans dug the earth with such tenacity, but according to the Guinness Book, the deepest German borehole is almost twice as short as the Russian one. Distant galaxies have been studied by mankind better than what lies beneath the earth's crust a few kilometers away from us. The Kola Superdeep is a kind of telescope into the mysterious inner world of the planet. In four years from the beginning, a depth of 7,263 meters was reached with a simple installation, also used in oil extraction. Then it was replaced by the development of a device unique for its time, Euromash 15,000, in which only the drill bit at the end of the shaft rotates in the hole. The probe itself is an iron cylinder with diamond or hard alloy teeth called a crown. It is the crown that cuts into the rock by digging a narrow corridor. Maybe by now, since we've been talking about the trench, you've been imagining something like a tunnel wide enough for a normal sized person to crawl through. Nothing of the kind. The width of the drilled hole is about 22 centimeters. It is possible to collect pieces of rock along the entire length of the excavation through a pipe in the turbine, which together with the drilling mud ascend to the surface. Thanks to this technology, amazing things have been discovered, which we will get to in a moment. From October 1976 to March 1981, in conditions of high temperature operation of the facility, the second stage was completed, namely, the 10 kilometer limit was passed, reaching 10,636 meters from the surface. On June 6, 1979, the then record depth of 9,500 
and 83 meters recorded at the Bertha Rogers oil well in Oklahoma, USA, was surpassed. When the third stage was carried out from April 1981 to 1983, the probe was already more than 12,000 meters underground. With this, the limit of the lowest point, even in the world ocean, was crossed, the Mariana Trench, with its 11,022 meters. The high-tech apparatus makes it possible to determine the physical processes that take place in the lower layers of the Earth's crust. Everything seems to be going well, and the whole mission looks set to be a resounding success. On September 27, 1984, planet Earth seemed to refuse to cooperate with the mission any longer, and the biggest accident in the process occurred. After a 30-foot hole, the team set about pulling the 200-ton column out of the hole, a routine operation that took about 18 hours. They exert sufficient thrust, but it does not budge until the devices report a sharp drop in weight and its lightning. In the subsequent removal and disassembly in individual sections, it becomes clear that five kilometers of pipes are stuck deep in the bowls, together with the shaft and the head. Thus, in practice, five years of excavation work was lost, starting again from the seventh kilometer. At this extreme depth, along with the crossing of different layers, bends of the pipes towards less strong rock types begin to occur, and with each measurement, deviations greater than the permissible are found. This necessitates a continuous effort to correct the probe using special deflectors. Accidents often occur, accompanied by the loss of equipment, which necessitates starting a new borehole. These factors have a significant impact on the rate of drilling. It took six years to overcome the consequences of the accident in 1984. In 1990, the maximum of 12,262 meters was reached. After the several accidents that followed, it became clear that no more digging could be done, even with the help of the most modern technologies. The project was frozen in 1992. Officially, in the process of work, several theories about the construction of the planet Earth have been disproved, the researchers expected there to be a transition from granite to basalt between the third and sixth kilometers, judging by the fast propagating seismic waves, suggesting the beginning of a basalt basement. Such has not been observed. Instead, intense heat and pressure were reported. The presence of water filling the fissures at such a depth also turns out to be a surprise. The many microscopic fossils at a depth of six to seven kilometers are also an unexpected find and quite preserved despite the heat and pressure. According to scientists, the temperature at 12 kilometers below ground level should have reached 100 degrees Celsius, but in practice, it is 180 degrees Celsius, and it is assumed that at 15 kilometers depth, it would be in the order of 300 degrees Celsius. In the process of research, a huge amount of spatio-temporal and geological information was processed and summarized. The physical field of the Earth has been studied, crystalline substances. Their origin and evolution over time have been analyzed. One of the most important goals was also fulfilled, to compile a complete picture of the entire depth of the probe. The largest collection of samples was created, described, and put together piece by piece in 900 chests. So far, however, with the official version. All sorts of stories have swirled around the project for years, including one that a recording device was lowered into the borehole to record the sound of the Earth's moving plates. Instead, however, the scientists involved in this task heard something that shocked them. What happened according to Viktor Azakov, project manager? When they reached 12,262, they lowered a special microphone to the bottom to record the sounds of the movements in the bowls of the earth. Instead, however, according to what they said at the time, they heard human screams down there. As a communist, I don't believe in heaven or the Bible, 
But as a scientist, I already believe in hell. Needless to say, we were really shocked by such a discovery. We lowered a microphone into the hole to record the sound of the movement of lithospheric plates. But instead of the plates moving, we heard human voices screaming in pain. At first, we thought the sound was produced by our own drilling rig. But then, when we carefully examined the equipment again, our worst suspicions were confirmed. Shouts, screams and screams of people. They screamed, cried, and the groans of millions of people could be heard, says Victor Azakov, the head of the Kola Ultra Deep Borehole Project. After the death of Azakov and the collapse of the USSR, his grandson discovered a copy of this phenomenal recording in his grandfather's house, and thus the voices from hell became public knowledge. The audio recording of the drilling can be easily found and listened to on the internet, but we have not found a source that can confirm its authenticity. For this reason, we refrain from posting or linking to unreliable sources. Most people think that the Kola Ultra Deep Borehole is really the gateway to hell. The decision to close the well is based on a lack of funding. In 2008, the site's equipment was dismantled due to moral and physical obsolescence beyond repair, and the service buildings were demolished. There are reports of other workers who participated in the drilling, telling amazing and strange stories. For example, the rope broke several times, as if some force was pulling it down. When the drilling tool was removed from the hole, it was several times found to be semi-molten, although the temperature at the depth reached could not have caused such a condition. After the drilling tool reached the set mark, the project was completed only after two years. Many of the employees of this project say that during work there was an explosion, after which a strange fog rose from the depths of the well, which struck fear into the hearts of people. Whether all this is true, we cannot confirm or deny. It's just the other side of the story that everyone's talking about, and we're presenting it. To date, there are about 25 ultra-deep wells, most of which are located in the republics of the former USSR. It would be interesting if you could share in the comments what other projects you can think of whose participants again tell stories about strange phenomena during their work. If you liked the video, don't forget to support us by sharing it with friends and subscribing to the channel.